Good morning, this is Bruce and uh, welcome to my shop. Um, this is the finale of um, the Cranky Arm. I must admit this is the second Cranky Arm series that I've made. I did one a few years ago uh, on a, uh, also for a printing press. It was quite, uh, uh, quite a big job and this one's probably a bit smaller than that. Um, I need also to correct that, that actually this Cranky Arm <coughs> It's come to my attention um, by the technician who's going to put it back in again in a couple of days. Um, is that uh, it's for a guillotine, not for a um, uh, uh, not not for a printing press, as I thought. But it's in a printing company, and that printing company is in Broome, which is north of here, uh, two thousand five hundred kilometres north of here, or about fifteen hundred miles. Um, so it's quite a, it's made quite a journey down here. Uh, and I will now walk you through the process um, and my um, uh, the system I use to actually build a new one. Uh, the old one was out of cast iron. So I'll, I'll swing the, the camera down a little bit further closer to the table uh, or maybe not. I'll show you at the moment. That's This is part of it. That's the other half. And so, originally, that's what it was. It has one, the smaller hole here has a, a boss sticking out on this side, and the larger hole has a boss sticking out this side. Um, this was connected uh, on, the, on the shaft with um, uh, just a, a push-on fit, a quite tight push-on fit, uh, and with a keyway. That's, there's a key inside there on the key and it also had um, through here it had a tapered pin that went all the way through and through the shaft. Now the problem is with, uh, with this type of connection when you go to mount a new one, if you're going to mount it onto a, a new shaft you can, you can get pretty good on drilling a hole through uh, and reaming it uh, for the tapered pin. However, if you're putting a new part on and it hasn't been manufactured um, in the factory uh, with a whole group of them at the same time all jigged up, then the, on the basis of probability, you're going to miss that, that centre hole pro uh, uh, correctly. At any rate, as you can see, this pin has been quite damaged, bent and twisted, and there's two other parts to it, there's three other parts to it as well. So, um, what I, de what I um, decided to do was to go to a split connection rather than, uh, rather than the pin. So instead of having the pin through here, what I'm going to do is to cut the new one through and, and drill and counterbore and mount two screws, two cap screws to go through and to work as a clamp arrangement because really all it has to do is to locate it. Uh, shafts of this size, uh, I don't know the machine, but the shafts of this size, uh, if it was under extreme um, uh, ex extreme torque, we'd probably have two uh, keyways or even a spline. Uh, so this is more of a positioning um, and it's probably an overkill uh, for the amount of work. So making it out of steel uh, has uh, proven to be, uh, will prove to be much uh, much stronger and I've got no qualms about cutting and bolting and clamping like that. I've done it before on quite a few bits of machinery as, as an alternative to either drilling and tapping and screwing in uh, grub screws and so forth. This will be a much, uh, but also what it allows me to do it was to make the um, the hole a little bit larger than um, than this diameter, just by by, by a couple of thou or uh, what's that? Uh, I think it was uh, about uh, three hundredths, two or three hundredths of a of a millimeter uh, larger. So that'll make it easier for the technician to to um, install it because he said it's it's a real problem working in that congested area and there's not much room. So he's quite happy with this solution. So what I'll do now is I'll turn the, um, 
Uh, turn the camera down and I'll show you the new part that I've made and also the, um, uh, the methodology that I've used and the tools that I've used to actually produce this new one. And so but prior to that actually, yeah, I'll do that and I'll show you what, I, what else I did here. So, in order to be able to find the, um, the centres between these two, what I did was I, I, I made up a, a rough drawing, uh, just, uh, just marked this out and made a rough drawing and sent it off to my steel, uh, one of my steel suppliers who were also water jets. And he water jet, out, he water jet cut a, um, uh, a plate, a piece of plate with a smaller diameter holes uh, at roughly the centres I needed. This, this all happened on Friday. We're now on so Monday morning, 6.15 in the morning. Um, and, um, and so he rough cut that up and out of, out of 60 mil, this is, fi this is only 52 and a half, so it was much thicker. Um, and what I then did was, uh, in order to ascertain the exact dimension between, or as close as I could, between um, those two centres of the bores, I, I drilled and tapped uh, a, a thread in here and put a, a cap screw in and I machined two shafts uh, with uh, little dimples in them and I measured between those two and, um, and I, got, I got then the centre um, the, 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 um, the centre between the two holes and that's, that's the way I um, uh, that's the way I went about that. Without uh, another option would have been maybe to measure outside to outside because the keyway is here, so that interferes. Outside to outside, half that diameter, half that diameter. But when I did that exercise, because of the roughness here, I come up with the same the same number. So it's six of one half. It doesn't matter how you want to go about things like this. Um, everybody has their preference. So <coughs> we now have the final product. <clears throat> this is it. It's it, it's almost totally finished. I've uh, I've bored both the ho both the, the the holes. I've um, drilled and tapped the the thread that goes uh, for a, a, a grub screw for the shaft here. Uh, I, I machined a flat on that side. We'll go through the process later on. Um, I've machined down and made the bosses. Uh, in both cases, I've split the um, I've split this. You, I've drilled, drilled in, and tapped two two threads in here. Uh, this is counterboard so that the bolt can see. Just introduce the bolt in. Uh, should be here somewhere. There we go. There's two two bolts. They're going to go in there. Um, and with a bit of oil and you're going to be able to torque those bolts up and tighten this onto the shaft. Um, as I say, I could have done it with, uh, with multiple um, uh, grub screws and things like that but I'm quite confident that this is going to do the job because what it's got to do is stop this from sliding off the shaft. The keyway is going to do the, uh, the torque work. Um, now the only thing now left to do on this whole project, and it's now finished, the only thing I have to do is to uh, finish the keyway. I just did a rough cut on the keyway, and uh, I've got one got down here. Uh, yeah, when they did the um, uh, when they did the water jet. So I just got them to position it, but this is going to be um, cut better. So I'm either going to get it wire cut this morning, uh, or or slotted of, um, because they my I don't have a brooch this uh, wide enough for that. Um, uh, that keyway is a 13, 13 millimeter di um, 
uh, then, and I go up, the biggest I go up to a half inch. If I don't feel like filing of that, I'll get that out to the um, thing. Now, what I, in, in order to, to make this uh, from the rough uh, cut, was the first thing I did was I, 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 plain, I, I machined it on both, on both sides to get it flat. Um, prior to that, in order to be able to hold it in the, um, uh, hold it clean, I, I machined this top part and I machined this side as well. And that allowed me then to, uh, this side here, it wasn't, didn't really matter, but that, that allowed me then to clamp between um, the jaws of the hydraulic, um, uh, hydraulic vise and, uh, and hold it while I machined it. And I machined it flat. Um, Using, using this uh, cutter. This is the fella. Uh, that that's got squares with uh, with, with uh, a piece cut out the top here. And these are what we call high rake, high um, uh, low power uh, units. This is quite a, a substantial size one. And it's got a, it fits my, both of my mills, it's a, a, an ISO 40. Um, so that was the tool, that, that was the tool that did the facing work uh, across both, um, uh, both, uh, both faces and brought that down, uh, and the top face here as well. Um, after that, I then proceeded to um, bore the two bores and the way I did that was um, I set it up uh, in the, also did that in the vise and got those, got those two bored out um, and then I set the machine uh, set it up on uh, my um, uh, on my table on the on the big table so 90 to 1 um, I'll just pan across there for a minute So those are the two devices uh, that I used uh, to um, to do the work, and you can see them in the previous uh, um, in the previous movies uh, leading up to this finale. Um, and so I uh, the the three the four ton hydraulic um, vice and uh, also my uh, my table, and um, and with the table we bolted it. Uh, bolted the um, it bolted it down, and we'll get that back out again. It's about time for me to uh, get two cameras, I think. There we go. See how we go with that. So, uh, so, so I bolted. The one hole down first. We had to do some packing underneath it um, to uh, to machine up the first facet. And the way I did that was um, where, where, where are we here? Where are we here? Ah, we've got it in the we've got it in the mill. Um, this uh, beast of a cutter that um, Dennis Nolan gave uh, all us YouTube. <laughs> Uh, creators uh, 2016 uh, uh, a couple of those uh, cutters and they were they were they're absolute beasts and they and that that's beautiful it just it produces I did the cutting on the side of course but it also um, produced that uh, that radius there that nice radius there. It, make, it makes up it comes up very well so we machined that that uh, first uh, facet uh, and then uh, after that. We moved it, I moved it across, uh, and uh, moved it, moved it across, and I did this other one, brought that whole thing down uh, to uh, to the to the proper height, because uh, this was a finished height anyway. Um, machined all that around, and did a bit of a, a roughy here, uh, connecting both sides, um, and then after that, uh, I then took it to the lathe, and. Um, whether we can see it here. Uh, four jaws here, 
that was one of the partners in crime, and set it up in the forejaw uh, to um, uh, to be able to uh, to machine uh, machine quickly machine off the rest of it. I could have done this also uh, on the table. I could have done that on the table. I could have done that uh, on the on the lathe. I could have done that as well, but. It was just a lot of setting up, and it was easier to do it on the um, um, on the table. So, what I when I was doing this on the table, um, that what I did was in both in, in the cases was um, and with, with the boring as well, as I clamped it down uh, using uh, um, using plates and uh, a, pl uh, 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 a whole plate and a clamp, and also used the side clamps. These uh, T-slot uh, clamps See they, they lock they lock in with this uh, screw into the uh, lock it onto the, the T-slot and then by screwing this down you, you clamp down it's got serrated edges on the on, on the top of it here um, and you can see you should be able to see there where where that those that gripped because it's at a, a slight slight angle, she was she was capturing, and that that captured the and, and made those those impressions. So, on both sides there's a there's a couple of there as well. Um, I'm not quite sure. Oh, there you go. Um, so, these little these little fellas are invaluable. I have 12 of them and sometimes some jobs I've used all 12 and even even had to use double-sided sticky tape to to do some jobs which are very very thin low profile. So this, that, that's one of the means and that, and that was one of the partners in crime on this job. Um, the, when I set it up in the four jaw because because of the boss here when I, when I came to, to machine this side, because the boss, I needed to, uh, and clamped it in the forejaw, I needed to be able to um, make sure that it would be on the face of the forejaw uh, at the same level as this. So I set that up on the mill table. Uh, I could have done it on on, uh, on on any surface, but and then I used my... Use my shim box, and that shim box has shims. Um, it's marked in metric and and imperial, and these shims these are actually made for mounting and leveling machines. They're a slot. They have, uh, they have a slot, and they can they can slot in, um, and, uh, and for for shimming up. And they go all the way down um, to the thinnest one here. Is 0 0.25, 0 0.025 millimeter, or uh, one thousandth of an inch. So, you can you can get an extremely accurate um, layout on that. And I use these shims. I have shim plates of that, but this gives me a far greater. Um, I'll mess around with that later. Uh, a far greater ability to, to 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 mix and match and and get the thicknesses that I want. Okay, so. Tools of trade that were used on this project. Quite often we forget, uh, and somebody was saying uh, on one of uh, making comments at the time, and they're, and they're, they're legitimate comments that uh, do, having done this on, and had I done this on a CNC, it would have gone quicker. Well, um, that's a moot point, and uh, uh, the amount of tooling and and so forth, and the cost. Of setting up and, and time and all the rest of it, it probably would have been much of a muchness between the two, and the, the cost of my machines and my tooling is far less than a CNC machine, and quite a lot of my colleagues who have CNC machines will not do one-off jobs like this, and certainly not on the weekend. There's very few of us out there who do this sort of work in the weekend. So, quickly, my more and right. Um, Square, 19 mil or three quarter inch uh, wrench that I use for all my bolts uh, on the on the table. A, Ra a Randy Richards scribe, beautiful. 
Um, my torch, always always handy to have. More right square. Little um, little ruler. Calipers. Pliers. Tap handle. More. More. This one, by the way, this fella here is an ogre, a more modern one, but his predecessor was Vargas. Both of them made in Israel, but Vargas was the original, original company, and I've had this one since the 70s, uh, and she's still going strong. Sharpie, can't be without that in the toolkit. Little Allen key. Paintbrush. Scraper for the, for the ways. ER40 collet spanner. This beautiful little rawhide hammer, which I bought uh, when I was in the States last year. Uh, in uh, Fresno, we went um, Randy Richards, Ray Canela, and uh, I'm thinking of the third person. We, the three of us went off to National Hardware, and I came back with this very light, beautiful thing. It wasn't cheap, um, but it's a very, very nice and handy tool to have uh, around the lathe. So um, oh, we mustn't we mustn't forget our uh, um, our, our spring. Dimensioners. <laughs> I'm just laughing with anyway. it. So we had all those tools we we're using. We also had. We also used one, two, three, four, five, and six ER40 collets for the tapping and drilling and counterboring, etc. Center drill, counterbore, carbide cutter, tapping dr drill, spiral flute tap, counterbore hole, another center. What else we got? A few parallels. One of those shims. Two bearings, two nuts, bolt, couple of washers. Two of those for counterbalances on the four jaw. Jacks. Studs. More washers. And, of course, the tap. The um, Tina, the Tina, what's that? So, oil cans. Uh, what else have we got? Where is it? Ah. Questioning of the significance of the. Um, let's see. Ah, here we are. 